Hey everybody, this is Linda Faulkner. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and my blog is www.crafterinspired.com and today we're going to be making a clutch purse that can be filled with many things but I'm going to show you a couple of possibilities. Uh, in this particular purse, I have filled it with note cards. You could do four or six note cards. So I'm going to show you how to make those as well as a little pocket insert that you could use for a gift card. So I'm using a different paper that's in the same uh, designer series paper set as this. This is from Needlepoint Nook and this is um, a designer series paper that is retiring in just a few weeks. So we are gonna be doing the same thing with another version from that same Needlepoint Nook set. So let me grab that paper and we're going to get started. I start with a 12 by 12 sheet of paper. Isn't that beautiful? Now, um, this is just a little bit different color scheme, but we're going to be making the exact same purse. To begin with, I just need to make a decision. Do I want to use the stripe? or the flower, so the back of it is the stripe. And I think I'm gonna go with the stripe and you have the flower for an accent. So I'm going to begin with this 12 by 12 sheet of paper and whatever I want on the outside needs to be down. Then I simply fold to match the corners. Down, makes a big triangle. My four-year-old granddaughter says it looks like a hat. I think that's how we used to make those newspaper hats, isn't it? All right, once you've got that down, make a nice crease and you'll use a bone folder, your fingernail, whatever. And I've folded this once before so you can probably see some of those creases. But make sure you have a nice crisp crease, burnish those edges, okay? Then I'm gonna open it up again. And I have this line down the center and I need to know where the middle is going to be. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna fold it, but I'm not going to crease it the other direction. Fold it the opposite direction, make sure those corners meet, and then just right here in the middle, give it a little crease so that you just have a, a line to mark on. You see how that's done? So now I can tell that my center is where those two lines cross, which is right there. Now I'm gonna fold each edge <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, each of these corners to the center, just like that. And burnish the edges. And I've already done that on this one, so I'm not going to take time to do that, but you've got the idea. So I have those two edges folded in. And now back, this is that first center line that I creased. On that center line, I'm going to fold it closed, just like that. Looks a little bit like an envelope. Okay. Now, on the bottom, I'm gonna fold it up about three quarters of an inch. And I'm not, I didn't measure it. I just kind of eyeballed it to get it straight, but it's quite a few thicknesses. You wanna make sure you're using uh, a nice quality designer paper. This is Stampin' Up! paper. Uh, cardstock, I think, would probably be a little too heavy and those edges would probably crack. Okay, so I've got that folded. I'm gonna pull it back down and open it back up. So I have my center line here, and then I just made these two lines. I want the center line to pop up. So I'm gonna pull that up, and it may take just a little bit of manipulation. And that's gonna give you a little bit of space in the bottom of your clutch purse. Okay. And once I've done that, that's that three quarters of an inch I folded. I'm going to close the purse. So you can see on the bottom, I have that nice little uh, fold that gives me a little extra space. <laughs> You're almost done. There's no gluing or anything to this purse. Then I'm gonna fold down the top flap and how far is totally your preference. Turn it over, fold down the back, same amount, and then be sure that you use your bone folder or a fingernail to burnish those edges so they're nice and crisp. And you have now your purse. We are ready to do some embellishment. 
the last um, actual mm, technical or building, I guess, part of this purse is you need some little bitty magnets. I can get them on Amazon. Mine are on the way. They have not arrived. I have not found my magnets since we moved. Uh, so those that will be a nice surprise someday. I will find them. Just take a little magnet. Use a, I probably would use a hot glue gun and hot glue it here and here. Um, let's see. Let's go up a little bit. Maybe like right here, closer to the top. Because what's going to happen, you're going to do that on both sides. And then that magnet will snap and hold that purse closed. And then it's easy to open after that. If your flap sticks up a little too much, just put a little glue dot or something there. Now to embellish the outside of the purse, I did the little flower embellishment. And this is coming from the Needle and Thread Photopolymer Stamp Set, which I love. Um, this is retiring. So it is, I just checked, it is still available. So grab it quick because they are selling out all of the retire items are selling out quickly. And then also it goes with the Needlepoint Elements Framelits, and we'll be using both of those in, in our project. So to make the little flower embellishment, let me show you what that looks like. See that? Put it kind of right there so you can see. I'm gonna make this little flower embellishment here. And to do that, I'm just gonna be stamping and layering. So I'm using the stamp for the leaves and it has like a hole in the middle of it. So it looks like this. So I'm just gonna st I stamp that on a piece of white cardstock in old olive, uh, old olive ink, I think is what I use. You're, there's lots of choices. So I stamp that and then I've also stamped the flowers and here's the small one that's in crushed curry and then I stamped a larger one in balmy blue. And those are all colors that match the colors in the purse paper. And those are found uh, in the catalog. This is from the Occasions catalog. Uh, it shows what colors coordinate. Or uh, when you get your paper pack, it will tell what colors coordinate with it. That's what makes Stampin' Up! products so easy. That's why I like it. Because I don't have to guess or figure out which cardstock matches. Have you ever been in a scrapbook store and you found the designer paper that you like? And then you can't find a cardstock that goes with it. Well, that's one of the good things about Stampin' Up! It solves that for us. So I've got these two pieces already cut out. And I'm just going to do some layering. And um, there is one other thing you're going to want to cut, and that is um, these leaves. There's two small and one larger leaf, and then this is what I used to cut the uh, background leaves. Looks like that. And then here's the two framelits that I used to cut out my flowers. So I've got all that cut out, and I've just layered it for you. So I've got my um, big leaf in the back, and then I put the blue flower on with a, a dimensional or a pop dot, and I'm gonna add my yellow flower, doing the same thing, just add a dimensional on the back and pop it in the center, which looks just like that. Now, the little trick to the leaves, I used a glue dot a small glue dot and I just put it on the edge of the leaf and then I press the leaf to the back of the largest flower. And that's gonna keep it up from your uh, background paper and give it a little extra dimension. Did the same thing right there. There's just a glue dot holding that on and the glue dot is pressed up to the back of the large flower. And then the final part is a little button. Uh, this is coming from the buttons that go with actually go with this needlepoint nook set. They're called needlepoint nook mini buttons. All the information is on my blog uh, here at www.crafterinspired.com. And I think the purse has a slash clutch dash purse. And um, there's two different posts, so you should be able to see them. They're they're back to back. So I'm just using these little cute little buttons. Aren't they precious? There's pink, kind of a sandy color, and a white. 
Now, there's one little trick you do need to know. Um, it is almost impossible to thread. This is the old olive linen thread, and that is also still available, but it's almost impossible just to, to you know how they, you used to just stick it through there? It's almost too small to do that. So I use, it's called a needle threader, and if you're a seamstress or an old seamstress like me, you, you've probably heard of it. So I simply take my needle threader and I run that wire through the hole and see how it opens up nice and big. And then I'm gonna put my thread and I've already done one hole, so I'm just doing the other end of it. I'll put my thread through the large wire and then pull it back out. And I'll have to pull to the end of the ribbon or the thread. There we go. And that'll uh, thread your little uh, twine through your button. This is called uh, Old Olive Linen Thread. So it's a little bit smaller than regular twine. And I just took that and tied a little ribbon, tied a little bow with that, like that, and then used a, a glue dot to put my button on. So that's pretty much the outside. Now, there's one other piece. I just used a button, and I just grabbed one from my stash. And I'm gonna put the button there. I crisscrossed it again with that linen thread just to give it a little bit of a look. And here I tucked one of those leaves behind it with a glue dot. So the outside is done. And isn't that simple? Now inside, you could put hot cocoa, you could do cards, um, coupons, tea, anything you want really. So the gift is perfect for basically any female. Um, I'm using one of these for a Mother's Day gift and some of them for teacher gifts also. So let's look at the cards on the inside now. I'm gonna put the purse out of the way and show you how to, very quickly how to make the cards that we have inside. The first one is the most complicated, so let me show you that one first. Get that out of the way. Here's the first card. So we're gonna do the same thing, but we're using the color combinations that work with the uh, paper that we chose. And I am grabbing my supplies. The colors in the new, well, you saw the purse on the outside, but this is another one of the, the papers that go with it. Isn't that pretty? It kind of goes a little bit more towards the berry burst instead of the uh, poppy parade uh, red that's in that one. So let's see, I've got it right here. So I've got a three and a half by five inch card. These are the ones that come in this notepad, not a notepad, I'm sorry, that's not what I meant to say. They come as note cards, but you'll get the cards and the envelopes together in a little package. And they're very reasonably priced, so I think you'll, you'll be pleased with that. I purposely have left the inside of all these notes uh, blank because I want them to have a little bit more flexibility since it's a gift but you could do it however you wanted. And I'm gonna use this color of flower, so I'm simply going to um, pull that out. And I have all the measurements on my website. This is going to be, everything's gonna be, of course, three and a half inches wide. And I think the height of this, I can check real quick for you, is one and a half inches high. Then I'm gonna grab some uh, ribbon, and this is a petal pink. I put tape runner on the back, yes I do. I'm not a glue person, I just am too messy. When I try to glue something, I don't do so well. And for this ribbon, I am simply going to just put it right there and then cut the excess off on the edges. Be careful not to cut your card fold. There we go. And now you see I have all this stuff here. So I'm gonna take my old olive. This is uh, Stampin' Up's wonderful, wonderful ink. And I have my stamp, I set it out. 
It is here, hiding. There it is. So this is the stamp that I want to use, and that's for that background leaf. Remember your inks, you tap, 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 tap. You don't want to push down where it oozes up. And you should not have anything on the edges. I do. If I was not brave, um, if I was normal, I would wipe that off. I'm pretty good at stamping it without getting that anywhere, so I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna turn it this way, and I'm gonna go straight down. Nice press, and up. And there's my stamp, worked great. The next thing I'm going to do is put the flowers on. So I have um, my blue flower, and then there's gonna be a yellow flower. Those will be pop dotted on. Oh, before I do that, let me show you. I've got this little, uh, see what we're making? Okay, I have this little uh, green lid and thread again. And I, all I did, I've got two feet of it. I'm gonna move my ink and close it up before we have another disaster. Not that I've ever had a disaster, of course. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of spread my fingers, grab the end of it and wrap it uh, about three times. Grab it in the middle, then grab the other side. And that's what it is. And then you can spread it out, cut off the ends if it's too much. And all I need now is a large glue dot and that's gonna work perfectly to hold this together. So here's my large, oops, small, small. Hmm. I think my sweet granddaughter who crafts right across from me has found my large glue dots because I did not see them. So I'll just use a small one. I might have to use two. So I'm just gonna press that right onto the glue dot. And I'm gonna do it on both sides since this is a small one. Can you see what I'm doing? Just press it in the middle and that's gonna hold those strings together. And then I'm going to adhere it just right in the middle of my card before I glue those flowers down. Okay. And that's gonna work. I've got a few little pieces to trim and I think we're good. I think the flowers are gonna cover all the ends. And you can spread that out, kind of play with it however you want. Then on top of that, pop dot your flowers. And uh, if you want to embellish with a button, again, you sure can. Now, the one thing I forgot to tell you, which you'll need to do before you start any of this, if you would like to have this little stitching, can you see it? That's just a little tiny edge of stitching. I think it kind of adds something special to your card, gives it a little bit of texture. And that was made with this particular framelit. There's another type of stitch you could also use. So I'm gonna take this framelit, and before I have glued anything onto my card, lay it right there and run it through the big shot and that will give me those stitches. So, I, sorry, I forgot to tell you about that earlier. Okay, so you good with that card? That's the hard one. The others are fairly simple, so let me go through those very quickly. The next one is going to look like this. Very simple. So I take my designer paper, and again, you could do either side. It's up to you how you wanna do it. So I'm going to use tape runner and adhere that to my three and a half by five inch card front. A little trick for me, I do better sometimes if I lay the card on its side and try to match up the bottom with my table and then one edge, and then the others fit. That fits pretty well. Then I'm gonna use a contrasting color, and this is gonna be the back side to make the little stripe. That could also be a wide ribbon, whatever you choose. If you're making a lot of them, the 
paper option is a lot less expensive. Okay. And then I have some of this. Um, this is called Venetian Crocheted Lace. And it is in the annual catalog. And it is retiring. They're coming out with a new um, white lace. This one is very vanilla. And the white one is really pretty. I think you'll like it. So that's next. And I use tape runner. I'm very bad. I don't like glue. because Mainly because I'm going to make a mess of it. So I'm just going to use tape runner. And then if anything is showing, I'm going to rub my fingers over it to get the shine off. And I'll match one end up and come off the other. I always think it's easier to cut it off than to measure it exactly. And then just trim off the extra. Actually, I'm gonna go a little further in the middle. This is very forgiving because that other edge is not quite perfect. It's a little bit frayed. I've been moving things around. So now I can just trim both edges very quickly. Two snips and embellish. And I'm using, this is a little, uh, looks like the wax, it's made out of gold. Not real gold, of course, but it looks like the wax on a paper and I have those laying around here. As soon as I see them, they have been buried. Uh, you just pull it off, they're sticky on the back. And I just put that there for a little embellishment. This is from the Floral uh, Essence, I believe, set. I'm so sorry. It's here, very frustrating. I can have it in my hand, and as soon as I turn that camera on, it disappears. Where did you go? I don't know. It ran away very well. Wait, wait, wait. Found it, found it. We're good. This is called Floral Romance Seals, and you get a whole package of them together, and those are still available also. So um, I love those, and it's a quick, easy embellishment. A button would work cute. You can do a bow. So that's card number two. And remember, these are totally different purses. This is a different color scheme, but I wanted to show you how I'm doing the same thing. And then card number three of the fancy cards is here. Aren't those colors pretty? I love this stitching. And I am going to show you the real thing. One thing I also wanted to show you was the envelopes. There is a really pretty little stamp. Uh, there's several stitching stamps in the set. It's called Needle and Thread. So I used this one, and on some of the envelopes, I've used these stitching stamps. Or you could use the flowers or butterflies, whatever you choose. But those make pretty little embellishments on your envelopes. And you can put them on either side. Never send a naked envelope. You put so much work into a beautiful card. Um, take just a second to make the envelope special. And then when they get the envelope, they can't wait to see the card because the envelope has already got them excited. All right, this is the one we're going to mimic or copy. Three and a half by five card. The top layer and... Again, you could do either side. And this measures three and a half by three and a half. This actually ends up being a square. So you're gonna, just a little bit of tape runner. And again, I like to push it up against the table edge and then my finger can make it go straight at the top or on one of the sides. Okay, and then this one, if that was three and a half, this one should be one and a half to get my five, and I'm gonna use the back side of it to contrast. And that goes right here. And I'm gonna use this pretty pink ribbon again. I 
on my blog, I've got the supplies listed also. So if there's something that you need that you don't have something you could substitute, um, it, ha it has a link that goes directly to that so you'll know the product number and everything. Very simple, just trim the edges. I'm a trim instead of measure kind of girl, which works great for these quick cards. There we go. It's almost hard to see those side by side, isn't it? It's hard to believe they're in the same paper set. And then to make my pretty little embellishment, I used my oval dies. I used the scallop and then um, the next size for the solid. And I'm gonna just tape one of those together. Just leaves a little bit on the edge, I like it. I'm using petal pink and obviously it's not exactly berry burst but it was probably the closest thing I had and then on top of that I'm going to put some flowers so I think I'm going to put my flowers on first and I'm using Stampin' Dimensionals for all the flowers because I want them to pop up just a little bit a little more dimension so I'll grab the uh, dimensional And I think I'll put this big one on first, just to be sure I have room. Okay, this one has to go away now. I don't like those two colors together. Poppy Parade and Berry Burst were not, are not friends. I can tell. So I'm going to put that one just about right there. And this one. Give it a little more berry on that side, about right there. See? You could even go for pearls or something in the center and use a little dimensional or make it flat, however you choose to put that right here. And you have another pretty card. Those are the three that use the designer paper that were on the one side. Now the other side, I made them all the same, so that makes it easy. Let me show you that. This is Berry Burst and Petal Pink. And here's my three and a half by five card. So this measures, I took a fourth of an inch off each end. So this would be uh, three and a quarter by four and three quarters. Again, check the blog just to be safe because I had my measurements in front of me when I did that post. And center that. And you know how... You think, oh, I can't do that. It's not perfect. If you look at people's uh, cards, uh, demonstrators that have been doing this for a long time, they're not perfect. See, that one's off a little bit. Now, that's a little more than I like. I probably would pull that off. Nah, maybe not. Maybe not. And then this one's going to go right on top. And this was made with the die cut, but it's really an embossing framelit. It looks like this. Can you see that? It does not cut around the edges. So I had my rectangle cut. And so this would be three inches by four and a half inches. And I had that one cut, perfect, the rectangle cut. And then I put this on top and ran it through my big shot. And it just cuts the holes and makes it look like stitches. And that's all you need with a pearl in the middle and you're good to go. So that is the purse. Um, I'll show you the original one. These are all, well, let's, I didn't glue everything on. I just showed you this. But on the inside, we'd have our pretty cards with their envelopes tucked beside them. Uh, I probably would just do four cards to give this as a gift, but I wanted it to, uh, I wanted to show it to you so that you could have more ideas for cards. So I think I would do two on this side and then the other two, and I didn't glue everything on yet. That one, and then my uh, embroidery piece would go on this side also. Now, one last little thing that I did and wanted to show you is do you see the Sending You Happiness and Love? That is part of the stamp set, needle and thread, and it also has a framelit 
That's so pretty. I've used this for lots of different labels. So I use that framelit to cut it out and put it right there. You could put uh, made by with your name or the person's name you're sending it to. You could do lots of different things with that. Okay, and then the other option, if you don't want note cards on both sides, oh, there's my other note card. If you don't want note cards on both sides, I made this cute, just little, I took a picture. This is my granddaughter. I added a picture to it um, with a sentiment from the stamp set. People like you make the world a better place. I uh, just added a little bit of embellishment with stamping. And then on the back, I made a little pocket and that you could use for a gift card or a coupon for washing the car or whatever you wanted to give someone. And then this has a, a little Mother's Day mom tag on it. And the butterflies were actually in that stamp set also. So that can easily be tucked on one side or you could do coupons on both sides, whatever you choose. But this is our little purse, clutch purse. And um, I thought you might be able to use that this time of year for teacher gifts or Mother's Day or birthday gifts for special friends. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, please take a minute to stop by my blog at www.crafterinspired.com and check out the supplies and materials that you're, you'll need. If you have any questions or need help with anything, I've got my website here and then my Stampin' Up! store is online at lindafaulkner.stampinup.net. Thanks so much for coming by. We will see you soon. Oh, wait, wait. You want a sneak peek? All right. Quick sneak peek. This is my next one. I am making favors for a Mother's Day brunch. And aren't those cute? This is coming from the Windows edge, uh, Edgelet Dyes Windows Thinlet Dyes, I believe is what they're called but I'll be putting some candy inside, perfect for jewelry. Um, I'm adding a little tag to it. So if you want to see how to do those, this die cut is still available. It's a framelit. And so I'll be uh, working on that for my next project. So hopefully I'll get to see you there. Be sure you subscribe, uh, like, and share uh, the video if you did uh, so that uh, you can get notification anytime I do another video. Thanks again. Have a great day. Bye-bye.